In this video, we're going to discuss Dalton's law of partial pressures. So the partial pressure of a gas, um, it, it's really just its pressure, uh, but it's it, the pressure of one gas in a mixture of gases. Um, so it's just each gas, if it's in a mixture, would exert if it was by itself. Um, so it's really like saying you're taking this mixture of gases right here and trying to mentally separate them and think about what would their pressure be on their own. So if this is, um, we've got helium and argon right here. So if my total pressure of the mixture is equal to six atmospheres, then this is saying two of those atmospheres are um, helium and four atmospheres are argon. This also tells me I have twice as much argon as helium. Because these particles are going to take up the same exact volume, because they'll take up the volume of the container. The rigid container just means the pressure increases as you add more particles. And so we can make this actually an equation um, that is the total pressure is equal to the sum of the partial pressures. So if I had a mixture of three gases, A, B, and C, it would be the pressure of the first gas, A, plus the pressure of B, plus the pressure of C in that one container, all added together to give me a total pressure. Um, another way to think of this is um, our atmospheric pressure. So let's say we're at sea level and we have one atmosphere of atmospheric pressure. That is um, the pressure of all the gases in the atmosphere, in the air combined. So I can say that that's really equal to the pressure of the oxygen in the air plus the pressure of the nitrogen in the air plus the pressure of the argon, plus the pressure of the carbon dioxide, plus the pressure of the water vapor, and anything else that happens to be in the air you're breathing. Um, so that really probably depends on your location. Um, and that the sum of all of these is actually equal to that total amount of gas pressure that you measure. Because when you're measuring with the barometer, it's not going to distinguish between different types of particles of a gas because they're all essentially behaving the exact same. It just measures a total pressure. So let's look at an example um, following up on what we did previously. Um, so in our previous example problem, we were collecting carbon dioxide um, in a, um, best, a container that had nothing in it. So it was at zero atmospheres. And so what if instead it had 0.98 atmospheres of air in it, and then we collected the carbon dioxide? What would be that final pressure? So in our previous ideal gas law problem, we calculated that 4.893 atmospheres of carbon dioxide were collected. So if we had, um, let's say we're collecting this in an Erlenmeyer flask that was capped. See, we had some reaction. Oh, this is going to something else. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, it's saying that in this flask when we started, we had 0 0.98 atmospheres of air. And then we add this 4.8 eight, nine, three atmospheres of carbon dioxide. So our total pressure is going to be equal to the pressure of the air that was in the flask plus the pressure of the carbon dioxide that's generated and collected in the flask. So that will be 0 0.98 atmospheres of air plus our 4.893 atmospheres of carbon dioxide. And so we're really doing a simple addition when we plug these in. Remember, this will impact um, addition and or utilize addition and subtraction 
significant figures, which are different than multiplication and division. We go with the least number of decimal places, um, and we get 5.87 atmospheres. I'm reporting two decimal places to match my least number of decimal places in my calculation. So we'll have a, a higher pressure um, that we collect um, if there's already air in the flask. And, and that's Dalton's law of partial pressures. It's really just as simple as if you put two things inside the space, you just add them together to know what their pressure is. Um, so it's, it's simple and straightforward, though um, there's a, a, a concept behind it that is easily forgotten.